Hi, I'm just going to uh, explore a little bit of playing on the four string cigar box guitar. I've been prompted to do this because I saw a thing on, let's just get that in here, uh, on uh, Cigar Box Nation. Somebody asked about reading music for the four string guitar, four string cigar box guitar. Uh, and there's various people posting up and it was I think it was getting a little confusing because the person who had started the question wanted to learn some sort of ragtime playing and thought it would be sensible to learn the tunes off the sheet music, off the chart as we call it. Now that sort of presupposes that you can read music. If you can't read music it starts getting difficult especially with that level of uh, stuff. Ragtime is, is quite a complicated counterpoint sort of thing. Um, there's a few uh, points which, if you are looking to do that, you do really need to understand um, the key signatures, what key you're playing in, how that's represented in terms of sharps and flats on the staff, um, and also what tuning you're going to put your guitar in. Now, a lot of cigar box guitar players, myself included, will play in an open tuning. If you're doing ragtime sort of stuff, a lot of it is really chord based, whether that's played on the piano or the guitar, it's a sort of moving bass with a melody on top of it. And a lot of that is based around chords. Uh, so if you've got the chord down, half the work is done for you. So I think my initial reaction was, go back to learning to play by ear rather than off the dots, uh, and then work it on chord based rather than open tuning. So it occurred to me there was two obvious ways of doing it. Uh, tune it like the top four strings of a guitar, D, G, B, E, or like a tenor banjo, that's tuned in fifths rather than fourths, so you get a wider spread of notes, excuse me, or, or octave mandolin, same sort of thing, which would be, I think is uh, G, D, A, E. Um, and then there's loads of stuff available for uh, banjo or mandolin chords. But if you tune it like this, like the top four of a uh, guitar, it's compromised because you haven't got the bass notes. And when you play a chord, quite often, important parts of the chord are in those bass notes. But let, let's have a go at this. On here, we can start, we, we can put some shapes that we could recognize. By the way, Ukulele chord shapes will also work, although you, the notation may be different because the uke will be tuned differently to you unless you tune your strings like a uke. And this bottom string is a low sounding note, where on the uke it's what they uh, it's this what they call re-entrant tuning. It's it's a higher pitched thing, so that'll give you a sound different sound. But we can take say a D chord on a six string guitar, which here on the top string. On the second fret, on the on the second string, on the third fret, on the third string, on the second string. So you've got that little triangle shape. That works, that's a D chord. And it also works nicely because you've got the D in the bottom. You can make a D7. So that's two easy chords. Um, we've got the remnants of a C chord here, if you imagine playing a C chord on a six string guitar. So I've got open two, open, sorry, open one, open two. Well, you're missing the bottom C. So it's a different sort of inversion or shape. So the, the, the root note, which is normally at the bottom, we're missing that. So it's here, near the top of the chord. Uh, and we can also do um, what's left of a G. There's two strings where we'd have a couple of notes, and it just leaves us with one note on the top here, the G, on the top. So there's three chords that we can do something with there. Um, and what I started doing, I took the C chord here. That's my C. I just moved it up until I was at, until I'd actually got a G. So I went C. A sort of a G chord. And then I noodled about, just picked and noodled around over the top. Thank you. 
So I've just got those three chords, uh, and I'm playing this, the second chord, the which is the uh, the D chord in this sort of. Um, I've forgotten the name of the chord, Dimin uh, sorry, yeah, a diminished chord, which, which is nice because you can move it up and down. Uh, and I've just sort of noodled around on the top with my little finger to add a little bit of melody. So that was my basic shape. Sort of chord fragments, and it's a bit weird because the root, the lowest sounding uh, notes, aren't necessarily on the bottom, they're in the middle of the chord, so it gives you a weird sort of thing. But it's a way into it. As for reading that, um, um, I'm not a great reader. Uh, I learned to read music for the fiddle, translated that to um, the mandolin, but never really learned to play read on uh, for the guitar but the key thing about this I think is finding the chord shapes once you've got a chord shape of some sort however partial you can pick and I'm sort of picking sort of alternating bass picking but you've got something going on there If you base it on chords and pick, you've got a fighting chance of finding a tune. Um, different to playing in the open tunings, which I'm so much used to playing on the on the cigar box guitar. So this is a bit of a challenge, um, but it might be worth giving a go if you're trying to do something a little bit more complicated. But to go back to the whole notion of reading, um, reading music, it's not incredibly difficult, but you do need to start at the very beginning, um, as the song says, and learn your Do, Re, Mi, um, and the basic music notation. So unfortunately, it sometimes does mean you can't go straight into playing 12th Street Rag on a three string. It might be more like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star until you've got your head round the uh, putting the dots into practice. But, uh, as I say, I prefer to play by ear, unless you really want to play with a bunch of people who are all playing off the chart, off the same hymn sheet sort of thing, uh, and you need to learn the dots. But do think about what tuning you're going to put your guitar into whether you use an open, uh, if you use an open, open uh, tuning, then of course you've got bar chords under your fingertips. I've not tried that. Um, but you've got the banjo or mandolin tuning and the most straightforward transition for a, for a guitar player is just the top three, uh, top four of a regular set. Bit strange, bit, and it is compromised. I would say that. It's a compromised way of doing it. But, Give it a go. Have fun with it. Bye for now. I'm off to make some more guitars in time for Christmas.